folks, I'm L.A. Little, and this is your daily T.A. wrap. We take a look at these markets, and we do it from a neoclassical perspective each time, asking ourselves what happened today and what might it tell us about the coming days. I do this show four times a week, Monday through Thursday, live at 9 o'clock Eastern Time, here from the base of what is a beautiful Rocky Mountain. Uh, folks, so what do we get to do today? We had uh, kind of book in weekend sell-offs Friday and then again on Monday. And then today, of course, being turnaround Tuesday. It seems like we get a rally almost every Tuesday. I, I, we probably should go back and look at that over the last year, but I bet you know 90% of the Tuesdays have been up, which is kind of amazing, actually, when you think about it. Uh, you know, maybe it corresponds with something the Fed's doing. Maybe it corresponds with something else. I don't know what, but it seems like every Tuesday uh, there seems to be some sort of rally taking place in these markets anymore. As far as uh, what the markets did today, they had a pretty pretty nice day up. Let me grab real quickly here the ending quotes. I didn't have them ready, so let me grab them real quick. And uh, it was a, it was a decent rally today. If I can find the quotes, here we go. We had the Dow uh, up double, uh, triple digit numbers, uh, NDX, NASDAQ, those were the ones that have been struggling. And so, you know, if we if we look at, you know, what's having a hard time or a good time, uh, really, it's been the NASDAQ that's been struggling. Here's the ending numbers. We had the Dow up, uh, ended up only a 91, that wasn't triple digit at the end, uh, 16, a 367, we had the S&Ps up uh, 8. 1865, still over the 1850 number, still underneath that 1880 or so number. So it's kind of in that range tree. We'll look at that next. The composite up 7.8. Remember, this thing got racked for about 100 points in two days. Uh, so a little bit of bounce today. Uh, NDX also a decent bounce, 12 points, third of a percent, 36 to 30. And the Russell actually ended up negative again on the day. We had gold down uh, just slightly. Silver was down a little bit more almost a percent. Uh, the dollar was up slightly. It was up bigger earlier in the day. We had a little bit of sell-off in the bond. So uh, what, what you really ended up with today is really just an inside day. And I've got the weekly up, looking at it on the weekly to start with. And the reason for that is, you know, if, if you're looking at this market and you're saying, okay, what is this guy doing? Is it, is it healthy? Is it not? You know, when you when you look at it here on a weekly and you look at this, I mean, it's pretty hard to say that's not healthy, right? You're over these highs, you're hanging up here near the highs, and so from a weekly perspective, this thing looks fine. Now, if you go down here and look at the volumes, yeah, the volumes haven't been that great, uh, but you know, they're not that bad, uh, other than the you know the December area. I mean, they've been decent volumes. So, you know, GSPC, S&P 500 still looks fine. I mean, there's really nothing going on here that would be worrisome uh, if you're looking at just this index. If I pull it in and look on the daily, uh, today basically was an inside day on all the markets. This thing had tested the highs, right? That test was here on Friday. That's when it gave it up, right? Got the big sell-off down. What does it try to do? It tries to break out the next level test, 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 right, one after another. We got one, two, three, four tests now on the downside and four tests on the upside of this small range that we're dealing with right now. And then of course there's the other range that's up underneath it. So what are we doing? We're sitting in the second floor, if you will, on a three floor house. Can't get to the top house, you know, the top floor can't get back down to the bottom floor. It's just hung here in the middle. It's been doing that for six, six days. What it has done in the meantime, though, and which is something that you always have to consider, is it's set up a couple swing point lows at the lows. They're not too far away in terms of price point. That's also problematic if, in fact, it comes back down here because it doesn't take much to blow them away, right? And when you blow two of them away together, usually you can get that kind of fast move down as a result of it. So now the structure is in place, if it wants, to go breaking out some swing point lows on the downside. If you look on the upside, you've only got one so far. You'd have to do another four bars to actualize that one and make it a swing point high. 
And if you were to do that, well, guess what? You're going to have two of them almost exactly the same price at the highs, although you will have huge volume on one of them, so it will make it hard to break them out. So when you look at it from that perspective, right, it kind of changes the table just a little bit, and that says what? Well, it says it's a little easier to break down this way than probably it is to break out that way when push comes to shove. But right now, we're stuck in the middle and that's why we, uh, you know, that's what it's doing. And Dow Jones is basically the same. I'm going to flip over to the IXIC, which is the Nasdaq Composite, because the Nasdaq had been pummeled for two days. That high, two days back, was Friday, which is when it poked up there and tried to get over these highs. Uh, that number was 43.44. We set a low yesterday at 41.90. So if you do the math, that's about 135, 40 points down in two days that's a pretty good move right so then you get a little bounce today inside day really didn't do anything but what it was doing and what you only get from a neoclassical perspective is what was it testing against it was coming back and testing against the swing point low that it broke how do you know it broke it well charts tell you that it broke it right here broke it with green which means confirmed in other words volume expanded so if you look at that volume you compare it back here to the volume on this bar, more volume, right? So you break it out, you break it out with more volume, now you go back up and you're gonna test to see if you can regenerate back down. You'd already done an ABCD structure, we talked about this last night. The fact that we'd already done it in two days does what? Well, that extends you and says, okay, well, you've met the structure, now you're probably gonna get some sort of a bounce and that's what you got today and that's what we talked about last night now it gets much harder because now you've got to try to climb back up above that swing point low because if you don't what does that do well more than likely that's going to set up some other ABCD structure to get you even lower another swing point down here it'd be going after if in fact it did it next support zone on the TA Today charts is the green it's right below, right? You got one here and you got another one down there. So NASDAQ doesn't look nearly as nice. And we've seen this divergence and we've seen it big time now for about three or four days and in particular the last two days. NDX looks exactly the same, same sort of thing. Only difference here is you've already broken this swing point here prior on the last move down. And then the big boy, Russell, right? The small caps. These are the ones that tells us the economy is either doing good or it's not. They can't get going. As a matter of fact, they already have ABCD structures in, not ABCD, but swing point lows in effect. And it's down here hanging out at those lows, getting ready to try to break them. So when I look at the NASDAQ, you know, I see that it has swing point lows that have been set in place now to get the kind of move to the downside. When I look at the Russell, the Russell has an, has an ABCD structure that would go into effect, but it would extend past whatever that is more than likely if it breaks because it's gonna break two swing point lows more than likely on the way down. Now, it may close in this area, right, inside here, and if it does, right, that would only be one swing point, it would actually finalize probably that ABCD structure because it's not very large. You got such a big bounce, the difference between here and here is minimal, right? So it won't take but just a little bit down here to finalize that ABCD. So you could go down there, finalize it, pop back up here, and then get another bounce. Remember that the Russell does have volume at the highs, and the Russell is setting up another high right here. It's four bars into it, it won't take but a couple more to make it happen. So Russell, NASDAQ, NDX, they're on the backside looking down, S&P 500 still on the upside. What else is on the upside is the sectors. The sectors really, you know, we looked at them last night so I'm not going to flip through them all again, but these sectors did not budge much at all today. Uh, they actually stayed um, stayed on target, most of them out there at the highs. Uh, you got no volume. You tried to push lower here on the XLF, you got no volume. And most of these ended up just being inside days, nothing changed from yesterday. So, sectors mostly positive. Indexes starting to build out some negativity. 
you already had the negativity in the NASDAQ and the NDX. You got the Russell sitting on the edge. You got the GSPC, the S&P 500 still sitting at the highs with that divergence that we've been talking about. And that's because most of these sectors, which are built around the S&P mostly, right? Those still look pretty good. Overseas, well, I, I actually got a question emailed to me, so I'll just kind of dive into it now because overseas, there's a question about uh, emerging markets, and I saw, I, I you know, I don't read extensively, but I read quite a bit during the day, and I saw I think three references today to money, quote unquote, flowing out of the U.S. markets into emerging markets, rotating, looking for something that's ready to move. Well, I think it's a little premature to assume that's what's happening. It's something I expected to happen for a long time and honestly I gave up on it last week. And the reason I gave up on it is the structures that were starting to form there just didn't feel like the risk was good enough, you know, the risk reward. And so I kind of left that idea along and you know maybe Maybe what I was trying to do for the last month and a half is finally happening, uh, but I'm not sure if it is or not. And what I wanted to do is I want to flip over to what drives the emerging markets, namely Brazil. Here's the Brazilian market. You can see it's spiking, a nice big spike up. It's already taking out that swing point low, so that puts it back into a range. And what I'm talking about here is, again, the retest region. When you're doing a retest and a regenerate, and we were doing it on this and on this one. When you're doing that and you get over on both, which is what's happened now, that makes the whole trade, this breakdown, nullified, puts you in some sort of a range. And so then the question becomes what the range is. I suspect that range is there, you know, from this, this area up here to this area down here. Uh, and that means we're almost at the top of the range if in fact that's the case. Nice big spike up, you get up there, you're coming into a swing point high, you actually have two of them up there you're coming into. Yeah, could it break over this and gyrate farther? Well, yes, but you know, if you read the fine print in the books that I've written, there's a number of things that say when it's a great trade versus not. One of them is that you're not extended, right? And this one's becoming extended. Um, uh, to some degree already. Uh, on the MTTF, it's not extended on this time frame, and it is extended on the bearish time frame. So from that perspective, it's not. But you've had a fast move up here, uh, very fast move up, and that's uh, actually going to uh, make it such that it's hard for you to uh, push, you know, even though you have the double swing points. If you break them right away, it's going to make it hard to push up. I suspect what would really be better on a bullish perspective is pull down. So that's that's one of the big numbers. Another big number, of course, is uh, China. Uh, I don't have a Chinese uh, index. Uh, there are some ETFs. I look at the Hong Kong. You know, Hong Kong had two big spikes up on volume. Right? It looks to me like short covering. Now inside day, I think it was inside. Maybe it wasn't. Yeah, it was inside day uh, last night. I suspect you'll come back a little bit deeper tonight into this gap area, and then we'll see if, if China slash Hong Kong is going to hold. Um, these charts don't look that enticing yet, uh, but they, they look okay. They're just not that enticing. Those are two big ones, uh, Russia, oh, and the other one is uh, India. India has been, actually India has been the strongest of all the emerging markets and continues to be. Uh, that's up the press and highs and you've seen it's had a big run while everybody else was dying so you know from that perspective they don't look bad so if we go over and we look at the EEM which is the ETF for the emerging markets it too is coming up to a swing point high and again just like we were talking about on Brazil you've got multiple swing point highs up here all kind of nestled together and this one if it breaks could actually get a nice break to the top side and so you could get a nice extension off of this. There was another one that was asked about, which is uh, uh, a derivative of this, or not a derivative, but a, 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 you know another one that's a basically the same, which is uh, Vanguard's, uh, I think it's called, uh, let me find it, MV, uh, VWO, VWO is the other one. But yeah, 
you break higher here, yeah, you can get an extension, right? And that would be a pretty good extension. You'd probably it'd probably run right up into that bar, top of that bar. So yes, but you know we've seen it multiple times here, and it hasn't been able to take them out yet. Uh, can it? Yeah, I can. And you know it looks it certainly looks better now than it was because you were setting up uh, multiple swing point lows not on just this time frame but multiple time frames and that was the concern uh, that I had uh, when I started backing out of this trade last week well actually on this bar so emerging markets yeah they look good uh, you know they're, they're coming back up there and yeah, they're gonna try it again and if they get over them yeah they'll get an extension I suspect that's an extension you know pull this back just a little bit farther I'll put it on a weekly you're gonna have you're gonna have a lot of resistance in this area, right? I mean that that is where it should show up, and so if it does get going, um, you know there is the potential. And these guys when they do move, they do move, right? So you've got an A B C D structure. I'm trying to find it from here to there and back up, so it can take you up into these lows. Um, so yeah, it's a decent move. That's what 41. And you're sitting at roughly 40, so a buck on that's two and a half percent, and it can do that fairly fast. So yeah, I, you know, I think there's the possibility that you can get a decent move up, but I don't know that you know the money's rotating there long term, which is what all these articles were that I saw today. Um, let me go back to the ox markets, and so we had bonds pushing up to test that high again. Um, we put it back on the daily. So they've been they've been struggling to get up there. Uh, they tried to sell them off a little bit today. They got within you know a few points yesterday. It was 1099. That high is 109.34. Uh, that high probably still is going to get tested. You got two swing point highs up there now. And I and I tell you, if this does break and it really breaks higher, right, and the volume really does expand, which it's hard to believe it would, but if it does. You know, you've got ABCD structures to take you higher. You got two swing points that you're trying to break. You know, you could get a fast move up into here if, in fact, it happens. Looks to me like it's going to stay range bound, which is what it's been for a while. Which is top range up here, bottom range down there. It's been that way for you know what is it, six, seven, eight weeks now. So, if in fact it uh, does do that and it does stay in this kind of a range trade for the next, you know, three or four weeks then that says that when you do get a breakout, whichever way it's going to break, right, you're going to have a lot of swing points lined up on both sides. And that is what you're starting to see already. You've got two swing point highs up there. You've got three swing point lows down here. So whichever side breaks, when this breaks, it's going to move and it's going to move pretty big, especially if it sets up another swing point up here. Because, you know, what does it mean to have swing points at the highs? Right? What does it mean to have these? Well, it means that everybody expects that range to hold. They're kind of betting on it. And when it breaks, what do you got? You got stops all up in this area, right? And they all start firing, and that's when you get the fast moves. That's what it's all based on. So it's the stops that give you the two to three bars fast move if, in fact, those stops are lined up up there. And the longer the range ranges out, the more the stops gather and the faster the move when it happens. Uh, that's bonds. Gold, gold couldn't do anything today. Tried to go up, couldn't do it. Just a little doji inside day. Gold still has those big bars down. Gold still wants to try to trade lower. Silver actually was even a weaker today. Couldn't do anything. It's been weaker. Uh, I noticed that the GDX, the gold stocks, couldn't do anything. They tried to lift. But as you see, almost everything everywhere is inside ranges you know inside days on the range from yesterday so you know inside days typically are a decision point right and that is a decision point whether you can do the continuation in other words you take a pause before you continue or you actually uh, go back the other way now what's been driving the weakness is the biotechs which has been killing healthcare, and here's the IBB, which is the Nasdaq Biotechs. You know, if you go back and look at the biotechs, and you look at them, I'm gonna put it on a monthly. And if you look at the uh, the run off the 2009 lows, 
and of course this one's not going to show you that the Nasdaq we'd have to go to I think the BBH might show it although they redid it yeah it's not going to show it either um, it was about a 300% run I mean it was a huge run now you come off you come off hard you break swing points and I'm on the BBH now BBH has already broken multiple swing points right there's a lot of money in these guys and if I'm sitting on a bunch of that money, which is what's starting to happen here, I'm going to try to take some of that money off the table if I haven't already done it. And I believe that's why you're seeing the escalation that you're seeing. But that's the main weakness. But the problem with that is it's spread. And it's not just these anymore. In other words, it's not just those biotechs. It's actually spread to other places like Netflix. Netflix came down tested today it still looks like it's going to try to bounce but it sure is having a hard time lifting if I go over and look at Google you know Google's been a high flyer Google's coming off some I mean there's been some other high flyers that have already been shot down Amazon being one of them right Amazon struggling Priceline this has been the poster child for for huge runs higher right coming back they're, they're taking all these high flyers and they're shooting them down those guys have been the leaders. Those have been the ones that every time this market wants to sell off, you get a little dip, what do they do? They run to these guys and buy them. Another one is CMG, Chipotle, right? This has been a huge one. It's starting to come off now. Yeah, they're coming back into a place they should get a bounce. But when you start seeing those that have led you on the way up, right, there has to be hot money going somewhere. If it can't find somewhere to go, then this market's not going to push like it's been pushing and that is, is every time it takes a dip they run back in and they grab these high flyers and these high flyers are starting to sting them just a little bit all right let's see what kind of um, uh, let me see here let's see what kind of questions we got eBay is one of them yeah eBay was coming in today I was looking at it um, yeah, it's coming into a nice big bar here the problem right now is 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 you just have to look at your portfolio, right? Wh whoever's doing the trading, right? You have to look at your portfolio and you have to ask yourself, okay, where am I going to buy this the first time? Where am I going to buy it the second time? Where am I going to buy it the third time? Where am I going to buy it the fourth time? I mean, you're going to have to plan three or four buys. And you're going to have to have very wide stops and uh, that means you're going to have to either put less money on the table, buy fewer of these or something. Right, because you do not know how far they're going to go. I like eBay. I think eBay is a, is a good trade. It broke here, right, with not all that much volume, and now you're coming back. You got a big volume bar here. We'll see what it does when it gets into this guy. But you know, eBay is a good-looking stock. I like eBay. Uh, I've liked it for a while. You know, I traded eBay way back in. Uh, Man, I don't know. I mean, I traded it way back before even this big range set up. It was a year and a half ago and wrote it up into this range. I'd have to pull it back on the monthly. Then it tried to break it. Yeah, we were way back here when we first started playing with it and it got most of that run on the way up. It broke it into this big range, right? Did the three swing points break? Only got one bar extra out of it and came back. So now you're coming back you know yeah it's a, it's a good support area it should hold you know I, I guess you know again you just have to look at where you're gonna put your stops these are the two big bars on the way back you really wouldn't want to see it trade under that one because if it does it's back in the range right And that's a big range and you're still towards the top of the range so if you're gonna play with eBay figure out where you're gonna play and how deep and how hard you're gonna play it um, the bottom of that bar would be the next buy so yeah, I like the stock. I'm just tentative to buy it at this point. XLV, let me see, what's the question? Tommy says, uh, are the biotechs making the XLV look poor? Could there be a separation from big pharma stocks? So if they go different directions, yeah, I think big pharma is not looking that bad. Um, give me a few symbols. Uh, uh, Merck is MRK. Um, you know, I mean, let me get back on a daily here. But, but anytime they start selling off, they all start selling off, right? And these guys have been big up too. It's not like it's not like it was just biotechs. 
But biotechs are bringing most things down. Merck's coming down. Uh, what's Pfizer? PFE. Um, yeah, J and J, PFE, right? Yeah, PFE doesn't look that bad. They're actually holding up pretty well. J and J, you know, because these, you know, the biotechs. Yeah, here's J and J looking fine. The biotechs are based on. Um, most of them, let's go the other way, most of the biotechs don't have much in the way of earnings, right? They're concepts. They're, they're things that they got some good pipeline stuff that they're going to try to do. Uh, if it gets approved, there's FDA approvals, there's all that stuff, right? And, and they, can be, they can be huge winners. And they can be winners in the sense that they get bought out. And so there's, you know, there's, there's a lot of that going on that, that gives you opportunity in biotechs, which is, you know, and it's the future, right? I mean, everybody's got health care on their mind. Uh, you know, there's a lot of people out there, so and a lot of, a lot of problems. And so the biotechs can give you that big bush. But the thing with the J&Js, the PFEs, Mercs, they got pipelines. I mean, they got drugs already out there. They're making huge revenues. These guys are making money, and they're going to keep making money. Whereas the other guys are going to try to make money. And when the try to make money start getting hit, yeah, it pulls down everybody for a while. But yes, money will rotate back to these. And actually here in Johnson & Johnson, you got a nice big breakout on volume already. So yeah, I agree with you. I, I, I think that's quite true. Uh, Dan Ralph says, EXC, can I look at it? Let's look at it right quick for a run out of time. This is a uh, utility, I believe. Uh, yeah, it looks pretty good. Let's see what the weekly is. Oh, so it's coming back into a big gap. Thirty-two seventy-five. So it does three thirty-three point one. Huh. Well, yeah, I wouldn't stick around there too long, man. You do have, you know, you have some good stuff going on here. You got, uh, I'm on the weekly right now. You have an ABCD structure in place, right? And we'd have to do the measurement right quick, but that's another 2645. That's about 450, 3360 or so, and you're at 30. 33. So you only got about 60 more cents in there. When you get up into the gap, you got a decent chance of trying to close it. That's 34.20. So anywhere from about 33.50 to 34, 34.20, that's probably tops, right? Now go back to your daily, and here um, you've got nice spike up volume. I don't know where you got in on this guy, but I I just would put my stop up underneath there, 31.93. See if I can get another 60 cents, maybe another dollar out of it. Um, that's another, you know, a dollar on this guy is another three percent. So I'd, I'd have my stop up underneath here though, and I just I wouldn't get back. Hopefully you got in it somewhere here uh, right before it broke, maybe when it broke out here. I know you're a member, so I'm guessing you got in here somewhere. March 13th. Oh, so you got it even earlier. So you, you anticipated the breakout. Yeah, I just put my stop underneath here and see if I can get the last 60 cents to a dollar. And it's in a group that's doing all right. It's a utility, isn't it? I, I believe I remember the name. And the group's still doing fine. So the group will probably test again. It'll probably test the top of this bar. That's another thing you can watch. When you get to the top of this bar, you know, take a glance at your guy and see if he's at the top of his area and that's where you ought to try to sell him. So, okay. All right, folks. Um, you know, today doesn't tell you a lot about tomorrow the next day. What we do know is that we sold off pretty hard and we have wide divergence where the S&Ps are pretty strong and everything else is struggling, uh, NASDAQ-wise. So what I would be doing here is seeing tomorrow is whether you can push. I suspect we're going to get another day or two of you know, sideways to push higher kind of action and then we'll find out if this thing caves back in. And the reason I say that is you're probably going to get a bounce on those biotechs and that'll take some of the pressure off the NDX. Folks, thanks for joining me. Have a great night.
Take care. I'll see you next time. Until then, I'm L.A. This is and was your daily TA wrap. Have a good one. Good night, folks.